Hey everybody, Scott Kelby here from KelbyOne.com, an awesome place to learn stuff like Lightroom. So I want to make you fall in love with HDR. And I know you hate it. I know you hate it. And I know why you hate it. So I want to explain to you another way to use it in that I think will make you fall in love with it. Because here's the, I'll give you an example. Here's a problem. This is the State Theater in Sydney, Australia. And beautiful theater, shot it with a 15 a millimeter fisheye lens. And the problem is this, it's really the highlights. So the chandelier is pretty blown out. Just this is the normal exposure. It's just pretty blown out. There's no detail really in there. It's kind of messed up. We're also missing detail in all of these and these are kind of overly bright. Same thing over here. So that's a problem. And the problem is, is that my camera is either going to make the theater look great or the lights look great, but it, it doesn't, the sensor, as good as it is, is not enough to capture all of this. So we take multiple frames, right? We set our camera to do, uh, take multiple exposures at the same time. You press the shutter button once and it takes like three bracketed exposures. This is the normal exposure. This is two stops under, and when you go two stops under, you get a beautiful chandelier, all right? Wait till it loads there. There we go. There's the chandelier with all the detail and everything's nice and white and gold and stuff just like it should be. Now, the third one, of course, is going to be two stops overexposed and you've lost all the detail. And so here's what we want to do. We don't want to do the crazy HDR stuff, but what we want to do is select all three of these and have it blend. The reason why we want it to blend is so that these images will literally take this exposure and take that chandelier. I went blank for a second. What is it that called? Oh yeah, a chandelier. Take that chandelier and open up some of the shadows like it has here. Put all this together into one image that looks realistic and it looks actually more like what your eye is seeing because when I'm standing there looking at the chandelier, it's not all blown out. It's only blown out when I take the photograph. So let's go ahead and right click on here. Let's go to photo merge and we're going to choose panorama now if you have photoshop and you're using camera raw you can do the same thing select all three photos at the top of the film strip you will also find a little little button you can click and it pops out a menu that says you can choose photo merge so we're choosing a panorama not panorama hdr can you tell that i'm recording this at 11:58 at night almost midnight no can't tell it's seamless here we go so here comes the hdr preview window it's pretty quick, even though these are very large files. All right, so even in this preview, which is not the done deal, you can see I now have lots and lots of detail in the chandelier, all right? So let's go ahead and hit Merge, and I'll show you the difference. Let's hit Merge. Now, I have Auto Tone on. This is what it looks like with Auto Tone off, right? Auto Tone is basically like going to the Develop module and just hitting Auto. So it seems tends to work better uh, for HDR images. So we're going to go ahead and hit merge. It won't take long, just take a few seconds and it'll give us a another document here, another image. There we go. So here's the HDR. The problem is this, the, it's this HDR version kind of has the brightness of the two stops over, even though I can see, you know, the chandelier. So here's what I do. I go and I try to match my new HDR image to the overall exposure of the normal the normal one. So and that's, that's easier to do than you think. Just go to the develop module, right? And you're just going to bring this basically, it's it's been increased the exposure by 1.70. Let's bring it back down to one or where it looks about right to you. All right, that's a little. All right, so somewhere in there, maybe a little brighter, something like that. Now, take a look at the image. I've got detail in the chandelier, detail in these little mini chandeliers. The lights over here aren't too bright. I've got lots of detail that I didn't have in the other image from all of in here. I mean, it really has done a really, really great job without us really doing anything. If you compare it to where we were, right, there was the original look at that chandelier and the HDR gave me that chandelier and an overall just more balanced image. Now, I want to show you, or you might be thinking, well, Scott, why don't you just go in here and 
pull back the highlights a bunch. Well, you would have to pull back the highlights a lot. All right, so let's let's do that. Here's the problem. When you really lower the highlights a lot, things don't, they turn gray. Do you notice it's all mucked up in here with an M, muck, and all these areas actually have now turned to gray. They didn't actually get darker. And this is a, a thing. It's the same thing with high. It's, you see it mostly with highlights, but also sometimes with exposure. Things that are white don't get lighter white. They turn gray. And that's what's happened here. And that's why that looks kind of bad is because when you do that, it looks funky. Now, that shouldn't look like that. Let's go compare it. Plus, I lost all the other highlights in the photo, but that's another story. But let's go and compare that now with the HDR version. So that would be this one right here where there's no gray. Everything looks like it should. So that's that's really the big difference is you're holding on to detail. The whole image isn't losing all their highlights. It doesn't turn gray. It more closely matches what our eyes see. Because when I was standing there, I can tell you, the chandelier was not blown out in my eyes. It looked fine. I could see the beautiful detail in there. Now, we haven't done anything else to this image except for the autotone. Now, the autotone did, um, it, it lowered the highlights some because the photo was like, what, two stops overexposed? Uh, and it increased the shadows a bit. You can feel free to tweak these if you want, but I just wanted to show you what the base thing does, that it's not a bad thing. It actually looks good. It actually helps us out. And it's not that crazy, wild, over-the-top you know, HDR that you you know your grandparents did. Now, if you want to go crazy with it, you can still go in here and, and do all kinds of crazy bad stuff and make it glow and make it weird and all. But I'm going to try to convince you not to do that. Because in order to fall in love with HDR, love, you can't do all that crazy crap. All right. I hope you found that helpful. Uh, again, same thing in Lightroom as it is in Photoshop. You know what else is helpful? We have almost 700 classes now. 700 full-length classes on Kelby1.com. So we'll be at 700 soon. We want you to be there. So go take the 10-day free trial if you're not already a member. Check out all the classes. We've got a great new class, by the way, uh, from Dave Cross. It is on perfecting selections. And I'm reading the comments in the forums about it, and people are absolutely loving it. Even people that said, you know, I knew some of this stuff, but there was some stuff I did not know. I mean, people are they're, they're raving about it. Even if they knew some stuff, they're still coming in and going, totally worth watching it. Learned a ton of new stuff. Dave's a great teacher, and you will love learning from him. Go check it out at kelby1.com. Thanks again, everybody, and we'll catch you guys later.